Hi, welcome. I'm Katie Wood, and today I am talking with Sat Atma from the Oregon Soap Company. Hi, how are you doing today? I'm, I'm doing good, Katie. How are you? I'm doing excellent, thanks. So what separates you from the other soap companies? Well, there's a big difference between the soap that we make and the mass-produced soaps. Um, the soap that uh, Procter & Gamble and, you know, the big soap makers uh, make is, is based on animal fat and petroleum byproducts. Um, it, their soap takes about 72 hours to make, where we use something called the cold process. It's a five-week process uh, that makes the soap very, very mild, and they last much longer than ordinary soap. And in contrast to the other, like, sort of small-scale soap makers um, that are, you know, our direct competitors, um, we're um, using all organic vegetable oils, and, and we don't use any synthetic fragrances or colors or anything. It's as organic as it uh, can be. All right. Well, I'm really excited to see how you make all of this. So, you want to show me? Are you all ready? Right, let's all right. Go. Let's go. All right. Well, here we are in our soap shop. We're going to make some soap today. We're going to make a peppermint soap here in this oil drum. And uh, over here we have all the essential oils that we use to make soap and the different herbs. We also use uh, an on-demand hot water heater. And this hot water heater only heats up water as we need it. So it uses just a very minimal amount of power. So what do we do first when we make soap? Well, first I have to put on my work clothes. All right. Well, let's get changed then. So this is stage two in soap making, right? After we got our protective gear on? Right, uh, right here we have a, a pot of a vegetable oil. We make all of our soap out of organic vegetable oil instead of animal fat, uh, like most soap is made out of. These are all our trimmings uh, from our last batch of soap. So we're just gonna put this in the new batch and it'll reform real nicely into new soap. So that way we don't have any waste. There's almost no waste. Um, we use uh, almost every last little piece of soap. Um, actually, down at the Saturday market, we take all of our scraps and leftover odd-sized pieces um, that don't get turned into soap again, and people buy those. Right now, we're going to filter the oil and make sure that there's no big chunks of unmelted oil. You can actually make soap out of any kind of fat or oil. You know, then the old pioneers used to make it out of their bacon drippings and stuff like that. We use three oils, palm and coconut and olive oil. Palm oil just makes a really nice, good, solid soap. Coconut oil makes soap suds. And then the olive oil is great for your skin. All right, now we're gonna check our temperatures. With our particular formula, the lye and the vegetable oil need to be within three degrees of each other. So our lye is now at 87.5 degrees. Then we'll go over here and check out our vegetable oil. So our vegetable oil is now at 93.5 degrees, so we need to heat up our lye just a little bit more before we mix the two together. And all the scents all come from essential oils, which are plant-based as opposed to uh, synthetic fragrances, which are, again, um, you know, chemical compounds that often have a, a difficult time biodegrading. So this is peppermint oil from the Yakima Valley up in Washington. It is a little more challenging using the essential oils than perfume oils because uh, most of our soaps are, are blends of two, three, or four, or five different essential oils, so it takes some time to get the blending right. You know, in the very beginning, we experimented a little bit with some of the perfume oils, and they just they gave me a headache to work with, and I didn't think they smelled good. And yeah, we figured out pretty early on that we just wanted to work with the plant based. So we're gonna add our lye to our vegetable oil. As you can see, I got a face mask on because you don't wanna get this in your eyes. And you can see the vegetable oils are already starting to change colors, getting thick and milky because it's turning into soap. So what is soap? How does it work? Soap is a very interesting molecule um, that's very long and skinny. And one side of the molecule um, sticks to dirt and grease and the other side sticks to water so basically when you're using soap um, there's it's like a, an electromagnetic bond that bonds the dirt to the water and you know how when you put a drop of water on your skin it just stays as a drop um, soap actually releases the tension between the water molecules so that the, the water and the soap can get down in, in your skin or in, in your clothing um, to get you clean about a half a gallon of essential oil we put in there. So the soap's done. 
All right, so besides the uh, benefits it has for our skin, what type of impact does it have on the environment when you make it? Mother Nature already has mechanisms uh, built into it that will break down plant-based natural materials um, as opposed to synthetic ingredients, which are often very complex, big, long chemicals that Mother Nature has more of a difficult time breaking down. So just by the nature of the ingredients that we use, you know, they biodegrade much quicker than most products that are out there. By using your soap, you're also offsetting CO2 emissions because of the carbon offsetting. We work with a, a, a group called Carbon Fund. It's carbonfund.org. And you can get on the Carbon Fund and you can um, calculate your own carbon footprint and so that, um, that the carbon that we're using in the production of the soap gets offset by the planting of, of trees is how I'm really into uh, forest uh, re reforestation projects. And we actually aim to offset at least 150% of our, of our carbon use. So this is the curing room. And this is where all the soap dries. Soap actually goes through a five-week process um, where it's curing. Um, here we have this big block of soap gets cut into these smaller pieces where they sit here for a couple weeks. Then they get trimmed up into bars like this. What happens in the curing process? During the curing process, the water um, evaporates from the soap, which makes it harder and more long-lasting. And the chemistry of the soap uh, actually takes that long to complete to actually turn this into a, a bar of pure soap. So now we're going to take this 200-pound block of soap and cut it into bricks, right? Yes. All right, let's cut some soap. All right. So first we're just taking the sides off, right? Yeah. We're going to take... Expose the block. Right. So how many different kinds of essence are there, soaps do you make? We currently make... Uh, 22 different kinds of soap, of bar soap, and then we're in the process of making liquid soap as well, and then we have about three different kinds of liquid soap. So right now it's just body soap? Do you make like a facial soap or hand soap? or? Uh, there's one of those scents that works really great for the hands. It's a cinnamon soap that's really good for like cutting grease and dirt, and um, and then they all work pretty good for the face. There's one in particular called honey and oatmeal soap, which is a, a particularly good face soap. What's your favorite? I like the Bay Rum. The Bay Rum? Yeah. Um, what do you find is the most popular? Uh, lavender is definitely the most popular soap. Yeah, that is always a popular fragrance. Yeah. This big bar of soap, which is kind of odd shaped, and you can see has lots of, lots of soap left over on the top. A piece like this will actually get taken to the Saturday market, and we'll sell it in our scrap soap area, which everybody loves because... They're like half price, so we just use some tools that a friend of mine made for us, and we shave off the top of the soap. And we'll throw these on a screen here to dry out as to well. Dry out as well. So these tools are nice because they really make the soap the same size. Yeah. So this is the final cut. We're going to turn this big brick of soap um, into 16 small bars of soap. Uh huh. Now these are going to cure for five weeks. I like them not to touch so the air can circulate between them. Um, looks great. All right. final process of making soap is the packaging, correct? That's correct. Um, our favorite way to sell soap is actually with no packaging, and people come into the stores and just cut off however much they want. Save a few trees that way. Yeah, save a few trees. Um, we also sell it uh, with our minimal packaging that just has a simple wrap around. It's called a cigar band label on it. Or uh, some of the grocery stores like to have it boxed up, so we have a nice box that the soap goes into. Well, Sat Atma, thank you so much for showing us around and making soap with me. I had a great time. All right. Thanks, Katie. Yeah, of course. And I'm Katie Wood with Sustainable Today, bringing you tools today to make you more sustainable.